Hi everybody, welcome to Active Self Protection Extra here at the 338 Club at C2 Tactical. And today, I wanna to talk to you about why, using a little graphic here, that I want really tight patterning buckshot over loose patterning buckshot and over a slug for a defensive shotgun. Palm Pepper Spray has recently reformulated for even more effect when you bless the deserving with the hot sauce. Palm is what I use between a harsh word and a gun and encourage everyone to do likewise. There is a lot of derp surrounding defensive shotgun use. I think a lot of that is because historically, uh, because we've been fighting the war on terror for 20 years, congratulations to terror for winning the war on terror, but uh, we, we've been fighting this for so long and we didn't really take a whole lot of shotguns with us over to Iraq and especially to Afghanistan because of the distance of the confrontations that we were in. So uh, the shotgun for the last 20, 20 ish years, 25 almost, has fallen out of favor a little bit. It's coming back enjoying quite a renaissance. And one of the things that I hear all the time when I talk about, I, I tend to load my defensive shotgun with a flight control wad, eight pellet, double op buck. And people say, why John, why wouldn't you want to have more wounding? And if you want tight patterning, why wouldn't you want a slug? I think it's a good and honest question. I think it doesn't understand what shotgun pellets do and what slug pellets do in a tissue. So first, of course, let's think about a slug. This is representing a slug here. You'll have to forgive my kindergarten level, uh, you know, illustrative purposes. But what we're looking at here is a slug that then impacts a body of some kind. We're gonna say a soft tissue, a deer or something like that, or an intruder. Now, what's this slug going to do? Hopefully it will tumble a little bit, but basically what it's going to do is continue on in its path, perhaps bend off its path, but continue in a single spot. We get a single wound channel the entire time. Now, hopefully these guys, it's quite a large wound channel and is a, get a significantly deep penetrating wound channel, but it's a single wound channel. Here on the other hand, when people talk about buckshot, they talk about the idea, you gotta forgive me, it's a live shooting range or shooting on the other side of this door, uh, is that, okay, we're making multiple wound channels, right? So we've got a wound channel that goes through here, we get another wound channel that goes like this and crosses over, we get another wound channel this way, we get all these multiple wound channels that come through and when they do, they hit like this and maybe this guy goes this way and around behind it. So we get this multiple wounding channels. And actually, I really like that. That is actually a really good thing. I'd, I'd earnestly rather have eight wound channels than a single large wound channel, given the fact that the primary method of incapacitation with a shotgun is bleeding. We, we decrease the blood volume enough that the brain can't keep up and therefore we lie down and stop doing whatever it was we were doing. In a defensive context, this might, by just the, the shock of the huge wound channel, just knock you over. And quite frankly, I think you put a slug in someone's chest, a shotgun slug, they're gonna regret their life choices. But I think here that, eight pellets of double op buck will do that very, very quickly. I've literally never seen somebody with eight pellet double op buck shot really anywhere at all that didn't immediately lie down and stop what they were doing. But let's think about this idea here of uh, the, the the very tight pattern of buckshot. So we you know we get a, a buckshot like a Federal Flight Control 8 pellet double op buck that's still in the shot cup at out to 10, 12 yards. And people go, well, John, that's just a slug. Actually, I think what we get is we get the additional distance of a slug. And at the same time, we get the wound channeling and the wound capacity of buckshot. What we compare the very tight control. Now, again, this isn't unique to a flight control wad. Almost any buckshot will do this at very close range and is perfectly fine. It just extends it out a little bit is because what happens here is what I want you to think about is when we have a swarm of bees here, right? So this is, uh, this is, I'm sorry, a swarm of bees. This is like a column of bees, okay? Column of bees, swarm of bees, and like a Mack truck. Uh, when we have a swarm of bees, each bee goes and does its own thing and acts independently of the other. Nothing wrong with this and it's, it's good. However, the, the column of bees, when it impacts the flesh or the soft tissue, what it does is this acts like a billiards ball break. And you know, anybody, I'll, I'll put a quick, you know, cut scene to that in here. And you recognize that when the cue ball hits that head billiards ball, it doesn't just move them all in, in an independent direction. What you get from there is you get scatter and you get that scatter that comes through here. And now all of a sudden you've got pool balls going every which away through like this because of the action of 
of them all impacting each other so that when they hit here, they actually tend to deform one another significantly. So they go from, from these, these nice round balls, which I really like, to because they smooshed into each other, they tend to flatten out, which will make them push into the, to the um, medium with a little bit bigger intensity. It'll also make them bounce and rattle around like a billiards ball breaking. So if I can, the longer I can have a, a column of bees, I would prefer the column of bees because of the action here, whereas the swarm of bees is super awesome. So if that's the case, why do so many people hunt deer with slugs rather than with buckshot? Simple enough, two reasons. Number one, legislature. Some legislatures say you have to hunt with slugs. Number two is because of range. So out for most people here, their, their buckshot comes off the, the deer. It gets to where it's not gonna incapacitate a deer somewhere around 30 yards, 25 yards even, and that's pretty close for a deer to come in. So they use a slug because they can, they can kind of figure out their holdover distances out to 50, 60 yards. So that makes it a better choice for them. But if I had tighter patterning buckshot that I had a column of bees out to 25 or 30 yards, and then I had a swarm of bees out to 40 or 50 yards, then that turns buckshot into something that's even pretty good here. The other part of that I think for hunting is a single wound channel is a little easier to clean up and you destroy less meat, which is significant in hunting. In self-defense, it's not. So tight patterning buckshot, that's why I like it. I think it has the best advantage. Hope it helps you.